in Psalms, choosing to use them in a emotional or devotional way, what we're doing is looking at how God would speak to us individually that where you're at and where I'm at are two different places, but because God is where he's at, he can look down and apply his foreknowledge to arrange our lives in circumstances that fit the Psalms in a very personal and real way so that it applies to you today as it would tomorrow and the next day because he already knows what has occurred and what will occur in the future as well as in the past and in the present. So knowing that he is who he is, God, he can by his Holy Spirit bring us to that understanding that the circumstances of our life are arranged and developed in such a way that some people say purposed or some people say driven or some people say uh, prov the providence of God that he has already orchestrated things to accomplish his will and we are the ones who are learning by way of understanding his speaking to us daily that our choices that we make he already knows, but he can decide for us or determine with us the direction we should go so that we would incur a blessing and learn easier than learn in a more direct way, which would be to cause the circumstances to force you in a direction that you might not have normally chosen to go. In Psalms, what we've done is broken them up in some ways. So like today, looking at Psalm 4, we're going to read from 1 through 4. And in Psalms it says, as God is speaking to us, Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing and freedom? But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offering our prayers to God sometimes is more of an affirmation of us realizing that he does hear us when we call because sometimes we feel as though he's so distant that we have to extend out some kind of extra effort as though God wasn't ready, willing, and able to hear us daily as we walk with him, to answer us immediately as we speak with him, to involve us in our daily process of living this life out as we go about our day. But he is, because Jesus said that he got up early before all that transpired and he spent many hours with God alone in his seeing him as he spoke and as he directed. So in Hear Me When I Call, O God of My Righteousness, we are crying out that understand, Father, where we're coming from. Realize and recognize who we are for what we are because we know you already know God. and. You have increased me when I was in distress. You, you made me able to see a bigger picture whenever I was thinking that I was so out of whack that you could find and show me and reveal to me what your purpose was and design. In enlarging me, you have had mercy upon me. And God, I ask for that again, that you would have mercy so that in now my lack of understanding would be increased so that you would hear my prayer and understand that I need you more than I need to have what it is I petition. And it says, O oh, sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? God speaking, man reaching, and they agreeing that there are the sons of men who have turned what was once a dynamic personal relationship with God and the living God into a place of derision and are you not made fun of when you say you have heard from God and God has answered your prayer? Do not people laugh at you and scold you and treat you as though you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good? 
do not people seek after themselves to fulfill their own desires, their own wishes, their own vanities? Do we not call our favorite programs idols? Do we not treat rock stars as gods? Have we not really puffed up and built up athletes as though they were something more than what they are? Children playing in a game? How long will we seek after our own freedoms? And how long will we go about acting like boys with toys instead of men of God? The difference between a man cave and a man of God is that one is a barbarian and the other is a righteous person who is walking after the heart of God and seeking him. So would you rather dwell in caves or would you rather be seated in high places. The choice is always ours to make. But we must know that God has set apart the godly, the man of God, the person who's seeking God for himself. He wants you. He wants me. He wants those that he has chosen for himself to be blessing him and causing him to smile, to have his countenance, to have his eyes upon you to look at you and say you yes you all of you you're my child I want you for myself I want you as I hold you in the palm of my hand and I want to love you and I want to show you things you never thought of and I want you to be aware of who I am in all my ways that I have designed for you and purposed in my heart to bring to you The Lord, Jesus, will hear when you call. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And so we know that we have our prayer answered. We have our needs met. We have someone who is real and alive and living, who always hears us when we call. Because he does, we can stand amazed. Because he meets us where we're at, we can be in awe of him. Because he paid the price of dying on the cross, we can be amazed. But we have to also do what he has said. And he has told us, sin not. Because sin causes separation. And while God may set you apart for his purpose, sin will separate you from himself. And you need to, if you find yourself in sin, confess your sins, for he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that when we lay down from morning to noon to night, and we lay back on our bed before we sleep, do you hold within your heart guilty conscience, or are you at rest with the one who has made you the best that you could be, so to speak, but greater than that, he has made you into what he has determined is his acceptable and perfect and willing sacrifice for sin, which was his son. Has he made you likened unto Jesus? Have you found that place while you lay upon your bed and you're still with God and you look up before you close your eyes and sleep? Have you found yourself without sin? without remorse, without anxiety, without fear, but rather at peace with God. So that the day will come when you lay down to rest for eternity. Will you say, I am guilty or I am innocent? Or rather, I am forgiven. <laughs>